Welcome to Cellar Out TV with your host, the Cellar Out Addison Rex. Today we're heading out into the vineyard to do some pruning. <laughs> These guys have been working out here all day long. They've uh, been able to prune like almost all of our vineyard in like two days, which is awesome. Uh, you can see on the ground, there's all these little piles of sticks everywhere from the cuttings from the cuttings of the vines and uh, typically we'll gather all of it together into one big pile and have ourselves a little bonfire alternatively and we can um, we'll use some of them probably and chip them up into little wood chips which we'll then compost and use again the following year which is a good practice although we don't really need all of it and uh, burning it tends to be an easy way to dispose of a lot of the wood chips So during the winter time, all of these grapevines are sleeping. It's called their dormant state, and they're saving all of their, you know, their, their energy because right now there's no leaves, so they're not performing any photosynthesis. So they're saving up all of their energy and getting ready for spring when bud break is going to happen, and that's going to be in a couple weeks. And that's really the whole purpose of pruning is to make sure that there's only a few buds compared to how many, because there could be buds on every single node. So that's a lot. So you want to trim it down to make sure that there's only about 6 to 12 on each arm. During the winter months, all of the vines are pruned back to about, you know, just the, the cordons. These large arms are called the cordons right here. And these are called the canes, the shoots that come off of them. Every year, these grow and they're green. And after all of the fruit has been harvested and you know, all the leaves die, the uh, canes turn woody into these hard brown shoots, which are then cut for the winter season. And the primary reason for this is to um, reduce the yield because you want those grapes to be really concentrated like we talked about before. So this helps to uh, reduce the amount of bunches of grapes that are growing on every vine. And that's necessary uh, in order to get high quality juice instead of, you know, really watery and not very flavorful berries.
So the sun's just setting right now. It looks like the day's about to be over. The crew got through about half of this vineyard block, but it gives us an opportunity to see what the vineyard looks like before and after. Let's take a closer look at the canes before they've been cut. So behind me you can see what the canes look like before that they've been cut. Um, it, each, each place where the, these offshoots meet, meet the cane, each one of these is called a node. So you, what you want to do is you want to trim it above that node every time. We've got these uh, really nifty pneumatic shears which rotate here, very ergonomic. And actually I have heard horror stories that before they invented these nifty devices it used to be really, really, really hard on your hands. These, uh, every one of these guys working out there has their own pair. It's kind of a, a standard operating procedure that everyone has their own shears. They usually wear a belt with it. It's a wild west approach. But uh, they actually make it the job really, really easy because these canes are actually pretty, pretty tough. And uh, you know, you can imagine if you're doing thousands and thousands of snips in a day, your, your hand would get really, really sore. So this naturally just rolls around your fist closing. So I'll go through and uh, trim a cord for you. See, um, as the grapevines grew, they used the trellis. That's why the trellis is there. Um, and these little tendrils, they grasp onto it. So they've grown all in between it. So another part of the job, you know, you have to kind of rip the cor these canes out from the trellising, which can be kind of difficult, I suppose, as you go.